Hey guys, and welcome to my MorphOS ambient desktop. Isn't it beautiful? Check out my weekly retro gaming podcast every Friday from the RetroHour.com. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is I've had quite a few requests of people asking if I'll do an updated MorphOS video, as I have covered it quite a lot on this channel in the past, maybe not for a year or so, and uh, I have seen some other YouTubers recently who've kind of stumbled across MorphOS, uh, installed it on, like, you know, an old PAL PC Mac, and then they get it booted up and they're looking at the desktop and they're like, you know, what the hell is this thing? What on earth can I do with it? So I thought I'd give you a little run through of some of the uh, kind of day-to-day -day tasks that I do on MorphOS and some of the programs I've got installed. But if you are new to it, just to quickly summarize in like a sentence or two what it is, it is essentially a next generation Amiga-like operating system. Now MorphOS started its life on the Commodore Amiga computers in the late 90s, machines that had a PAL PC CPU upgrade. And the idea was that it was gonna be a modernized version of the Amiga's operating system, drag it into the 21st century, keep it regularly up to date with lots of new features, and that's essentially what it is. Um, but over the last 10 years, you know, along with lots of improvements and updates, it's also been ported to various other PowerPC platforms as well, including old PowerPC Macs. Now I've got it on a Mac Mini G4, and this machine is a Power Mac G5. Now let's just get the elephant in the room out of the way first of all. Morph OS is not Amiga OS. I see that confusion all the time in other people's videos and articles and that kind of thing. Amiga OS does still exist, it's still in development, but if you want to run that, you're going to need a specific motherboard for that called an Amiga One. And they generally retail for about 1500 to 2000 euros. You cannot install Amiga OS on a PAL PC Mac, so there you go, just get that out of the way, because a lot of people seem to get confused about that. That said, Morph OS will run pretty much most of the same programs as Amiga OS. You know, anything that's developed for one system generally is supported to the other, and they will both run a lot of the old classic Commodore Amiga um, applications too. So what we're looking at here is my Ambient desktop. So if you've got any Amiga background, Ambient is essentially Morph OS's version of Workbench, or you know, like Finder in their Mac OS, or Explorer in Windows. So the desktop here, we've got my uh, disk icons over here on this side, so you know, I can highlight them with a the rubber band. If I double click, that's my system disk and all the directories in there. We have some little navigation tools that kind of vary, you know, on um, what kind of window you're looking at. So, uh, you know, it's all very, uh, very polished and a nice improvement over the original Amiga design. And uh, down the bottom here, we have uh, what looks like a dock in Ambient. They're called panels, and you can kind of drop them anywhere you want on your desktop. So these are the programs and applications that I generally use most kind of day to day. So we'll start from, you know, the first one here on my dock. Uh, that is the shell. Now, the command line is actually pretty powerful in MorphOS. This is called MuiCom, and it is really a development of the old Amiga DOS. So, you know, those old Amiga commands will still work, you know, stuff like uh, Avail, for example, shows you free memory. I've got two gigabytes in this machine. Uh, DIR, uh, you can see a directory listing there. And even the directory structure is the same as the Amiga. So we've got C for commands, L and libs for libraries, devs for devices, S for scripts. So, you know, if you're familiar with the Amiga uh, kind of directory structure, you'll be very at home on MorphOS. Even programs like Ed that we used to use to edit startup sequences and stuff, that's all in there, you know, up to date, obviously. So, um, yeah, the MorphOS shell is pretty good. You know, it's all drag and drop or to complete as well. So it is often quicker to quickly bash things in the command line rather than, you know, going through subdirectories and all that kind of thing. So I find myself using the command line quite a lot in MorphOS and Amigo OS. And next to that we have Grunch. Now Grunch is a package manager, uh, quite similar to what you get in a lot of Linux distros. What it'll do is keep an eye on all the programs and their uh, libraries and stuff you've got installed on your system. It'll check it against its regularly updated database and basically tell you if you've got the latest version. And if you haven't, it'll warn you that you're out of date. You can just double click it, it'll download the newest version of the program, all of its dependencies, all of its libraries and stuff like that. And it'll make sure that your system is regularly updated. So uh, yeah, Grunch is really, really good. And by rights, I should probably include this with the operating system, but you know, at the moment, it is a third-party download, but it's dead easy to get, so definitely worth it if, you, uh, if you've got a MorphOS setup. Uh, next to that, we have a web browser, Odyssey web browser. So I'll double-click that. And as you can see, this is uh, the main web browser that we run on MorphOS. It's uh, WebKit-based. And as you can see here, I've got MorphZone open, which is a forum and uh, a news site for MorphOS, giving you the latest news. Uh, in the next tab, I've got Aminet, uh, a classic Amiga download site. I think at one stage before Apple launched their App Store, Aminet held the record of being the biggest single software repository on the internet. So considering it was started in 1994, that was quite a feat, you know, it held that title until like, you know, the early 2000s. Um, it is a tab browser, you know, next tab there will show me my recently op uh, open sites. So uh, click on Amiga World, for example. 
Um, it will get you around pretty much any modern website that you want to go on. Uh, stuff like Facebook and uh, Google Drive and that kind of thing are possible on it, but remember we're using a PowerPC Mac from like 10 years ago, so they are going to be a bit slow. But there are even scripts to watch YouTube videos in the browser and that kind of thing too. And next to that, we have my email client of choice, which is Simple Mail. Now, I've got it open up here at the top. Uh, I think it's in my spam directory. Yeah, I didn't want to give away, you know, anyone's personal information or anything. But as you can see, you know, it's quite a nice, clean design here. If I open this uh, EasyJet spam, you can see, you know, the email gets something in the bottom. You get your emails in the top. You've got the little address book down the side there as well. And, you know, supports HTML emails and that kind of thing. So um, this is, is, again, it's support from an old Amiga application. Uh, you can also get Yam, another famous Amiga mailer on MorphOS, but I do prefer Simple Mail uh, for day-to-day -day use. Uh, next to that, we have a media player. This is Aminet Radio. Now, I do listen to a lot of internet radio. Uh, the last stream I had open here was twit.am, which is uh, Leo Laporte's This Week in Tech Network. You know, he streams all of his audio programs on a 24-hour stream, um, which I won't play in case I get a copyright strike. But you can also have a playlist edit here, and I've got a load of, you know, internet stations and all that saved in here. So, Aminet Radio is pretty cool. Next to it is Multiview. Now, Multiview is another hangover from the Amiga days. Uh, this is essentially a, uh, a media player that can handle lots of different file types. So if I open, for example, a, a text document, drag and drop that in, as you can see, it will display the text. Um, if I open an image file, and it's all drag and drop the UI, which is pretty nice. I do kind of miss, you know, dragging icons in and stuff on, uh, on Windows. So if we go to images, uh, these are some workbench screen grabs. Let's just try uh, no, an IFF file, for example. There you go, that loads into there. You can play movies and sound clips and all that kind of thing. Uh, on the Amiga, you had little file handlers called data types. Um, they still exist in MorphOS. I think they're called Reggae um, these days. So uh, essentially, you know, if Multiview won't open, like, you know, an audio format, download a data type for it, and then all of a sudden it will work. So that's pretty cool. I always kind of like that about the Amiga. Uh, next to that, we have Amiga Amp which is, as you can tell by looking at it, uh, an Amiga and Morpho OS port of Winamp. And you know, even to this day on Windows, I still do generally use Winamp as my main music player. It's like the UI, it's really simple to use. You've got your equalizer here, your playlist editor, and this supports, you know, like flag AAC, MP3s, and even the Winamp skins work on it. So we've got the Pioneer skin in here, looks pretty slick. Uh, next to that, we have a movie player. Now this is mPlayer. Um, I think it's a port from a Linux app, and uh, it works pretty well, opens, you know, most media and movie formats you'd use day to day. Let's find one in here quickly. This would be quite a giggle. AF Upgrade. Now this was an Amiga format VHS tape they released in the early 90s. <laughs> so here it is, uh, Amiga Format's old offices in uh, in Bath, Monmouth Street. There's Steve Jarrett, I think his name was, the editor. And this was a video showing you how to uh, upgrade the Commodore Amiga 1200, I think, so it's quite nostalgic. But yeah, you can leave M player open, you just play movies on your desktop while you get on with other stuff, so it's, uh, it's quite a nice little movie player. Obviously you can do full screen as well, but I think if I do full screen, my capture card's gonna get confused with the rev resolution, so I'll leave it in a window for now. We'll just close that. Next to it, um, we have this little icon here that looks intriguing. This is Wookie Chat. Now, Wookie Chat is actually my favorite IRC client on any platform, not only like Amiga-like platforms. And uh, I know IRC is a little bit old school these days, but I am generally logged into IRC for most of the day. Um, I'm on the official MorphOS channel here. You can see we've got Twit Live there as well. Um, but really, it's quite good, you know, if you've got a question. Um, and you want to ask, you know, get a solution. It's quite handy just to go in here. You know, there are 62 people in here at the moment, and usually it's quite active. It's a bit of a lull this time of day. But you can go in and quickly ask a question and get an instant reply, which is, you know, quicker than going onto forums and waiting a day or two. So I generally get IRC open in the background for most of the day. Next to that, we have what looks like a, a sexy lady in my dock here. Have I been busted looking at something I shouldn't? Well, actually, with this you probably could, uh, because it is another image viewer. Now, it's called Showgirls. <laughs> Weird name. But actually, you can open a directory in this uh, right panel here and just scroll with them with your mouse wheel. And what I've got open here, I've always been quite interested in other people's desktops, you know, like, because on the Amiga, Workbench was really, you know, you could configure it to look however you want. So a lot of people spent a lot of time in the old days configuring their desktops and workbenches. And there is actually a directory on Aminet you can download called a WB. And there's basically workbench screen grabs from the early 90s up to the modern day. So I'm quite fascinated going through them. So this is a directory we've got open here. But it will work with, obviously with any, you know, photos directory you've got or pictures. So we'll just double click on them. And they'll open here in the uh, left side of the screen. So there you go. There's a saucy one for you. <laughs> But yeah, I think, you know, Showgirls has got a pretty nice interface. It's just, you know, scroll down, you get all of these open straight away. So 
Some of these are pretty nice looking workbenches, actually. Look at that. So yeah, Showgirl is probably my favourite picture viewer if you've got a big, uh, you know, collection of photos you want to quickly go through. And next to that we have Jalapeno or Jalapeno. This is essentially a optical media burner, you know, burn DVDs and CD-ROMs, drag the ISOs into that window. Not much more to it, but you know, it's useful to have and built into the OS. Um, ATC, AMI Trade Center. Now this is an FTP client. Again, it's support from an old Amiga application. And as you can see, someone's been downloading some uh, dodgy pirated software by the looks of it. Uh, it is abandoned work technically, you know, these are 20 years old. It's all right, isn't it? Uh, but I'm on the um, EAB file server here, which is a really good resource for old Amiga applications and games. You know, you can double click in here. They're all in like categories, collections, you know, cover discs from magazines. You find every single one in here. You can just download them straight to your machine. And uh, ATC is a pretty nice IRC client. Um, MorphOS comes bundled with one called Transfer, uh, which I've got connected to Aminet here. So, you know, they've both got different uses. Um, ATC is probably a bit more uh, feature rich, but they both work just fine. Next to that, this little joystick. Uh, looks a bit like a quick shot joystick or a Competition Pro. Um, E-Game. So this is a, a game front end, a launcher for your games that you've got installed. Now, again, like I said before, um, a lot of these are going to open full screen and my capture card will probably, you know, out and it'll uh, not record it properly. So I'm just going to open one that I know will run in a window. So we'll do uh, push over. That should. Yeah, we are. It's an SDL port of the old uh, Amiga game. I might remember Pushover, that was um, included with, I think it was the Amiga 600, the Wild Weird and Wicked pack. So this had a little upgrade, upgrade a couple of years ago. Um, looks pretty nice, you can run it in a window and all that. I think I'm going to come out of this to quit it quickly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a pretty nice update of it, actually. And there are a few other games like this, like old Amiga games that they've kind of upgraded. Uh, Voxel Bird, I think that was a port of Flappy Bird. Do you remember that game that was like, all the rage about a year or two back? Um, very addictive game, but so annoying. So, uh, yeah, so there's a few games. E-Game's actually pretty good. And you can even put emulation uh, games in here as well. I think you've got some categories there on the side, little launch your emulators. Uh, which I'll show you emulation in a bit more in depth in just a minute. Uh, next to that, we have Amipodder. Now, I listen to a lot of podcasts. In fact, I record one every week, uh, every Friday, about retro gaming and retro computers, theretrohour.com, if you want to check it out. And uh, I do like having podcasts playing, but this uh, program here is a podcatcher or a podcast download client. So really, it means you haven't got to scour you know, every podcast website to find the files or you know there's no iTunes on here. Well this is really simplistic. You just put your RSS feeds in and then you can just download them. So you know Amipodder, I think if you listen to podcasts it's definitely worthwhile having it. Next to that we have Scribble. Now this is the native Morph OS uh, text editor that comes with it and uh, essentially it's just an ASCII or uh, RTF I think it supports as well text editor so you know if you're doing coding or script files it's quite good for that uh, and also it's uh, you know good if you want to just do simple text documents and that kind of thing it's got quite a nice UI to it as well so that comes included with the OS. Snoopium is really useful now if you remember Snoop DOS on the Amiga uh, this is really good for kind of doing diagnostics and seeing why programs are not working so if I open for example uh, to set the shell again you'll see there so when I double click a program this will keep an eye on all of the resources and all the libraries that the pro program's trying to open and tell you if it succeeded or not so if you get a program that you know fails for whatever reason it will usually tell you what files missing so you can go and like track down that that file or whatever so it's really handy just to keep an eye on exactly what the system's doing uh, speaking of which actually if we go a bit further along here we have a uh this program Scout, which you know is a system profiler and like investigates everything on your machine, every resource, even like you know what's in which memory location, uh, libraries, devices, ports, windows. So if you want to get really down and dirty and find out exactly what is doing what on your system, this will tell you everything pretty much. And uh, between that, we have uh, a little rabbit in a hat. <laughs> this is called Grabber. So if you want to share off your uh, you know your sexy looking ambient desktop and share it with the rest of the world. Maybe on that Aminet directory I told you about, then uh, this will save your uh, screenshots in uh, PNG. Um, I think it does JPEG and yeah, IFF, the Amiga's native format too. So that's pretty nice. Uh, we have Exchange next to it. Now again, this is kind of a legacy Amiga um, commodity exchange. Our commodities were little programs on the Amiga that ran in the background and took care of like simple tasks. And this is to, you know, basically control them. So Wookie Chat is a commodity. We'll do show interface. It'll bring it to the front, as you can see there. Minimize it again. Um, you can also end tasks and stuff from here as well. So if you've got something running in the background, you want to bring it to the foreground and, uh, you know, or kill the task or whatever. That's quite useful. Uh, next to that, we have the preferences that are all on this um, single pane here so it's quite similar to mac os in that regard so you know you've got your keyboard input there you know usb controller 
uh, which uses Trident, you know, network. So you can control everything from uh, from this little preferences pane, so that's quite useful. And the last one in my dock here is to shut the system down, which we won't do just yet. Uh, looking around the stuff I've got on the ambient desktop, NAS, that is my network attached storage. In the other rooms, I've got my movies and my music that I've got shared on the network. Uh, on the top here, if you press a right mouse button, just like the Amiga, you get all these pull-down menus, which uh, will appear at the top or anywhere that you kind of drop them on the desktop here. So I've got some of my most used programs in here as well. Um, this one might be quite interesting. Emulation. So if we look at, um, I've got a few emulators set up. You have DOSBox on here, uh, Atari 800, uh, Genesis Plus, and I've got a few ROMs in there. So here we go. If you want to look at um, Aladdin, for example. And this is pretty nice. It supports like a, you know scanline emulation and all that too. And as you can see, the scanlines are on there. You can control this using a plug-in USB joystick or controller. Uh, again, I won't put it in full screen because my capture card will complain. But you know, it runs full screen. It's, it's a pretty nice emulator, really. And you get this really nice UI. So just drop your ROMs in. That works really nicely. I've got one for the uh, Super Nintendo as well, actually. There we go. Uh, let's find a ROM. Uh, Super Mario World. Start that. Again, in a little window. But as you can see, you know, it's uh, launching that just fine. So there are some, you know, pretty good emulators. You've got MAME and stuff on here as well. Uh, Scum VM, if you're into those old uh, LucasArts adventure games too. So they're pretty nice. Uh, then if we go into my system disk, we've got um, loads more applications and programs in here, uh, all split into various categories. Uh, I'm quite into audio as well, actually. So there is some good audio software available. Audio Evolution is another port of an old Amiga app. So we'll select our sound device here, uh, run it on this window. As you can see, this is a multi-track editor. So we've got our sliders down the bottom here. Uh, you can you know, have up to, I think it's about um, eight or nine different multi-tracks in here. So if we're editing podcasts and that kind of thing, or you know, music even, it, it is pretty good for that. Save them out as like WABs or MP3s. If we go back one. Um, Excited Player, that is an old Amiga mod player. If you're into those kind of you know, old 90s scene mods on the Amiga, you can play those just fine in MorphOS. Um, I do get some people asking me, you know, what's Amiga compatibility like on MorphOS? Now, there is actually a port of UAE, the Amiga emulator, for games and stuff, because MorphOS won't run uh, stuff that bangs the Amiga's custom chips, you know, uh, like most games and demos did, but it is possible to set up, like, you know, shortcuts so you just double-click the old games and they will run. But for just, like, Amiga productivity software, most of them run absolutely fine. Like, as Cygnus said, Double click that, as you can see there. This was an old uh, Amiga text editor, so it's what all of those, uh, you know, the ASCII artists and all that used to use. And as you can see, this is a, a native Amiga program. It's running just fine in MorphOS on its own screen there. Um, and what else have I got? Another Amiga one. Yeah, Wordworth. That was one of my favorite kind of higher end desktop publishing apps on the Amiga. I double click that. There you go. And that will work just fine. See? Looks pretty good actually on this display and uh, everything functions just fine on it. So uh, that's been a little look at what I kind of do day to day in MorphOS. Um, I do get a lot of questions about it. If you've got any, of course, leave them in the video comments box and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, MorphOS is a paid for operating system. It does cost about 100 euros actually if you want to buy it and uh, you know run it full time. Um, you can download a free demo of it and try it out on an old PowerPC Mac, for example. It'll run perfectly well for about 30 minutes and it slows down. So if you want to get a bit of a flavor for it, I'll pop the link to the download in the video description. I did mention before that you know the nearest comparison to this is Amiga OS 4, which uh, you're gonna have to fork out, you know, the best part of a grand at least for a machine that will run that. So in comparison, you know, the, the 100 euros for Morph OS doesn't seem all that unreasonable when you think about it. But really, you know, if you run Windows and Mac OS and that kind of thing day to day and you're into video editing and all that, maybe you won't be too interested in Morph OS, but if you're like me, you're into kind of alternative operating systems, maybe you've got a bit of an Amiga background and you feel very at home with Morph OS, then I'd recommend you give it a download and uh, try it out and see what you think. All right, thank you for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.